Thursday, Thursday, I love me a Thursday. How you doing? It's another football chat with Ben. Welcome back. That's not the new intro. Don't think I've changed it. Uh, yes, we've pre-recorded this episode. If any, if anything's happened, you think that's happened. They didn't talk about it. It's because we had to pre-record. That's just the way it happens. Uh, but yes, again, the, the S's. It's the day of the S's. Stoke, Sunderland, Swansea, Southampton, they're all with me. Uh, so, enjoy it. It's the, th- it's the fourth one. Um, and I've got no more to say. Get, get a like on it now, why don't you? Because you're going you're gonna to want to at the end, if you get that far. Please get that far. Okay, fantasy football. Th- th- this is pre-recorded. Much love. Goodbye. And hello, because I'll be back in, like, one second. <laughs> Folks, welcome back then to the fourth episode of the Premier League Previews with Football Chat with Ben. And I'm not alone. We have two fans from four of the teams that we're looking at today. So again, if you are a Southampton or a Sunderland fan and you're interested in doing a bit of recording with me and you're a professional and uh, you're flawless, then message me on Twitter and we'll sort something out this season. So let's kick off. Uh, Dave, Gravy Boat FM, I said it right this time, I definitely didn't get it wrong before, uh, is a Stoke season ticket holder and a Real Oviedo shareholder and also an FM video maker. You're a content creator, Dave. Yeah, yes I am. How are you doing? How are we? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. Uh, secondly, Christopher Ormy, he's a Football Manager Hall of Famer in my eyes. Uh, he's also a Swansea, C- uh, a Swansea City season ticket holder, that's a mouthful, and uh, an occasional Twitch.tv streamer. Uh, Chris, how are we? Doing good. Good. Doing good. good, I'm pleased. Um, so then, shall we get on with it, boys? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, now, as I say, we're without a Sunderland fan or a Southampton fan. I mean, we're going to kick off with Southampton, but I feel like we're we're good enough to chip in on, on Southampton. Everyone good with that? Yeah? We're just going to yeah, chip yeah. in? Yeah, right. Uh, so, last season they finished seventh, and I think, uh, Dave, before they started off, we weren't sure how they'd got on, really. It was, oh, well, actually, I'll tell you what, most people were writing them off. Uh, what did you make of Southampton last season? They did well finish seventh. I, I was surprised. I was, I was very surprised with them, to be honest. Um, Personally, I thought they were going to be finishing like bottom. That's that's what I predicted them to finish last season yeah. after selling all the players. I thought they were going to be bottom, but to get seventh with the players that they brought in as well, I, I didn't expect anything from them, to be honest. I thought they were middle-of-the-road players, but I, I was really surprised that they actually finished seventh, to be honest. They played really well. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, K- Koeman came in, Chris, and... I think there was a lot of question marks over Southampton last year, but he brought in the right players. He sold a lot of players, but he brought in the right players, and that was the key for them last season. Yeah, I think he made one or two really nice signings that sort of improved the weak areas in the team after the sales. And a lot of people were focused on the players going out. But for me, the quality of the players they actually kept and the spine of the team they still had, uh, I never really saw them struggling in terms of relegation. Hmm. But I certainly didn't see them, you know, up in the Champions League places for so long, and being able to finish, like you say, seventh after possibly one of their best ever seasons, really. So yeah, I, I think the, the summer compared to how they actually finished was quite the contrast. They obviously said so last last season who did they get rid of? They got rid of Lambert, Lallana, Shaw left as well. Um, was there was there any other little ones that were Chambers? Were, Chambers went to Arsenal as well, of course. Who who from what I've heard. Southampton fans have rated him a little bit higher than uh, than Klein on occasion. Said he was a better crosser of the ball, etc. And as a Liverpool fan, we could do with some crosses, apparently. So I've heard. Um, and obviously this season, Klein's gone and Schneiderlin's gone. But we've mentioned it already. They've brought in some great players. Jordi Classy for me is the standout. Uh, Stephen Cork has come in at the back as well. Uh, Dave, is there anyone that they've brought in that you like the look of? Classy, Classy is the one for me. I, I think he's going to be. He's going to be one of those a dark horse in the league. I think he's going to be that underrated player. He's going to be a great player for sort of fantasy football sides as well because I think mm. he'll score a lot of points that you wouldn't expect him to get. I think he'll score a lot of goals for them, but I think he's going to be one of those underrated players. But he's a great piece of business for them. Yeah, he's one of those. He's another player that's come from the Dutch league, and I think the kind of Chris, the idea from a Dutch league standpoint is they come and we don't know if they're going to be good or bad. It seems to be sort of in a cycle that a player comes from the Dutch league. They either set the they either set the uh, set the league alight, or they do an Alfonso Alves and have a little bit of a flop. Uh, what do you think about Classy though? Do you know much about him? Yeah, I think Swans were link- linked with him a few years back, and have been following him you know, on football manager and yeah. his name suits him he is a very classy midfield player um, I think he's a good age I think he's 24 now um, just turned 24 this summer he's got a lot of football ahead of him but he's already rated very highly for the Dutch national team as well as you know in 
in the league. So, I don't know. I think he's a gr- a very good signing for Southampton, but I'm not sure they needed a central midfielder because that's a real strong point for me yeah. with their team. I think yeah, they've got they've got some youngsters. Obviously, Ward Prowse is one of the uh, is one of their better players in that area. Stephen Davis has played not too bad. I think when you lose a player like Schneiderlin, though, I do I do think I've, we've, I've spoken to lots of fans this week, and I think we're all kind of the general consensus that he will be United's best signing um, yeah. from, from the window. So to replace him. There's going to have to be a man that's going to step up and do the job. I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about the other signs they've made. Uh, made. They've got one me, uh, Cedric Soares, uh, Mantina from 20. I don't know if you guys know anything about any of them. Can you fill me in? Um, one me is an interesting player. I think, again, he could do good. You know, He's another young player. Haven't really seen him do too much. He mm. hasn't got a, a huge goal scoring record, but. You know, a young Spanish forward it's probably going to be technically good and they do have a very very solid midfield and uh, like you say you know with classy in there Stephen Davis Wanyama Ward Prowse Reed um, even some of the wingers there he's going to have a lot of freedom you know if he plays him and Jay Rodriguez they're going to have a lot of freedom yeah. to just sort of express themselves up front so I'm going to be interested to see how much of a chance he gets this season because I think that could be a very, very good pickup. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned Jay Rodriguez uh, and Dave. Obviously, he was out last season yeah. for for pretty much the whole season. Did he start a single game? Was he out for the year? I think he was out for the year, right? I think he was out for all year. Yeah, yeah. But and but I think the season before that, he showed a lot of potential. He played with Lambert up there. Uh, with Lallana and behind, and they look really good together. And I think Southampton fans, especially, are very excited to have him back. I think that they rate him very very highly uh, do you think do you think it's a funny one isn't it because when a player comes back from injury you often wonder how they'll get on if they'll be able to perform um, do you think Southampton will be, be using him more than Pella because it'll be interesting to see them play together I like him a lot but I, I don't see him starting in that centre forward role I think Pella will obviously um, start in the main striker role but I, I could see him playing Rodriguez on the wing a lot but I don't know how many opportunities he's going to get because they've got a lot of good attacking players that I would I would rate higher than Rodriguez. So I don't know how he's going to really fit in anymore to the squad, especially after being out for so long. Yeah, I think I think they're in for another good season. Font had a great year last year. Uh, Fraser Forster had a good season too. It's going to be interesting to see how long they can keep getting away with this, though. I think that's a big thing for me. That they've had sort of a couple of seasons now where they've lost a lot of personnel, and and you do feel like eventually the massive change around will have an effect on the team but if, if Keeman does what he did last year I think we can expect big things um, where do you think they'll finish we'll go We'll go to the both of you Chris where, where do you think uh, Southampton finish this season um, I really round, like, you can be general as well you don't have to give like an exact point but like round about yeah I, I really like what they've done in the transfer market over the last couple of years and while they have lost a lot of players I think they kept the the core of the team fairly solid and I can't see them dipping too much below last season but I don't think they'll finish as high. So somewhere between 10 and 12th, maybe. Um, I sort of see them firmly in the midfield battle, well away from relegation this season. Yeah, Dave? Uh, I don't see them doing the same as last season. Maybe about 9th, 10th, that sort of position. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, don't think, I think, as I say, I think it'll suddenly catch up with them a little bit. I think they've lost a lot of quality. I think Schneiderlin's a big blow, actually. As much as we think Klaas will do well... I don't know, that Schneider, that Schneider loss I think will hurt them more than we realise right now. But when Yama's in there as well, they'll certainly have a bit about them. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, if you're a Southampton fan and you want to come on this year, uh, either drop me a, a tweet on it on Twitter, obviously, or drop a comment in the video. And if you're a Southampton fan that just wants to let us know what you think, again, comment section, get in there. Uh, now then, Dave, we're going to move on to Stoke, who have yes. been incredibly busy, and they're being called <laughs> Stoke Alona. Yeah. And uh, as a season ticket holder, you must be pretty excited. I'm absolutely ecstatic that we're actually... I, if, if you'd have told me about 10 years ago that we'd be sign, signing players from Barcelona <laughs> when we're in League One, I'd, I'd thought you'd, you'd, you'd be mad. You'd think I can't believe it. You'd think something's happened to Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. It's uh, unbelievable. Okay, but I do want to go back a little bit. I think the story really is who you've brought in. Glenn Johnson is quite the pull. Um, but, yeah. but last season, Mark Hughes changed the way you played. He's been, he's been doing it for a little while now. But the sort of the stereotype of Stoke and the reality of Stoke these days 
it's quite a bit different and obviously you've watched for a year what did you make of it it's brilliant um we we've actually shown now that we can actually play football i think it was the case before hughes came in we could actually play football we had a lot of players that could do it but the way Pulis set his side out wasn't exactly in that mindset and Hughes has come in now completely changed it we're actually passing the ball for once which is which is crazy um <laughs> and we're scoring some nice goals we haven't scored a goal from a set piece in about a year and a half what? so hang on whoa whoa you do, like from like corners and stuff, are you yeah. counting corners you've not scored corners, a goal from a free set kicks. piece we haven't scored a header from a corner or free kick in about a year and a half that is one that's a problem two that's I can't believe that that's crazy to me wow exactly um, so you, a few of, a few players have gone out I want to talk about Begovic because we we spoke a little bit pre uh, pre-recording and yes. you and I think the general consensus among, amongst fans of other teams and Premier League fans and f- well, fans of all, all around the world really that Begovic is a a top tier keeper in the Premier League and but he's effectively retiring going to Chelsea but you tell me you've got a slightly different point of view on Begovic yeah I don't I don't rate him the same as many other fans rate him. Personally, for me, the way he's been playing the past season, he, the season before he went to the World Cup, he was unplayable. He, he was fantastic for us. But he, he's some for some reason, he went to the World Cup and then he came back and then just sort of dipped. I don't know what it was. The first game of the season last season, um, his distribution and things like that were extremely poor and he just seemed to have... Something just clicked for him and it changed. I don't, I don't know what happened. And then for the rest of the season, he just seemed to be very poor. So to get around £8 million for him is a fantastic piece of business for us, especially with him being 28. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a decent deal for us, to be honest. Are you expecting Butland to be the number one now? Yeah, of course. He's, he's going to be the number one all season. How high? Because, again, he's another player that is sort of spoken about but not seen, especially because he's English as well. And uh, there, was talk, there was talk last year, a couple of years ago, that he would definitely be challenging Joe Hart soon enough for the number one jersey do you think he's capable or are we overhyping him oh yeah definitely I, I think I think if he has a good season for us this season in the number one um, I think he definitely will he'll definitely make that England bench keep his position his own and I think he'll be challenging Hart definitely for Euro 2016 good because I want to see I think I think Hart's I think actually Hart's a little bit underrated actually but I want to see someone pushing him and I think Butland could be that guy he's been playing for the 21 for what feels like a very long time now yeah uh, so yeah now then you're uh, you're in we can't I, I, we can't not talk about them can we they're so interesting <laughs> um, Van Ginkel Shay Given Glenn Johnson Afolai uh, Jossilu, is that how you'd say that? Oh. Yeah, a bit of a mix. Yeah, and you got Philip, you do that one. Philip Volsha. And yeah. the other one? Um, Jakob, Jakob. Oh, Jakob Halgard, yeah. That's it, thank you, from Michelin. Uh Which is the most exciting? Um, for me, if he stays fit, Afolai. Yeah, as soon I, as think... You, I think as soon as you said, if he stays fit, everybody, know who you, everybody knew who you were talking about. He's a football manager yeah. player that would often get injured. So, what do you think he'll bring? Afolai? Does, does he bring what you need? I guess is the real question. I think he does because we have we've got Arnautovic. He brings the pace and the skill. But the problem with Arnautovic is that he doesn't really start playing till March. His season doesn't really start till March. <laughs> he has about ten good games at the end of the season where he's absolutely unplayable. But then the rest of the season he does absolutely nothing. So hopefully Afolai can be that player to come in and do it for the whole season and bring a bit of pace and flair to the team that we need but I think it'd be good if he stays fit for us yeah um, I've asked this to quite a few fans so I want to hear your opinion on it the signings you've made have they fixed the problems you needed fixing because you've sold a pilot on Zonzi to Sevilla who's been a bit of a mainstay in that Stoke team as far as I'm concerned do you think you, the, the change in style has meant that he's had to move on and you've had to get in a player like Van Ginkel who can do a bit of everything um, as I say are the transfers the transfers you wanted to see pre-window some of them no. Um, who? Tell me who. Glenn Johnson is someone <laughs> I didn't expect us to sign. I didn't. I remember the day he came in. It was like we rejected the Shakiri deal and brought in Glenn Johnson. Yeah, that, that, that is that is a turntable of emotion, isn't it? I, I was so disheartened by that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine watching him for two years. I saw it on Twitter, and then I was it was like Stoke reject um, Shakiri deal, and then the next tweet was like we've signed Glenn Johnson, and my head just hit the desk. 
I can't I'll tell you what I've watched him for two years. I can't imagine that that is a roller coaster. I'm so excited, and then you, it's like you look away, you look back, and oh, he's in a shirt, he's in a Stoke shirt. Yeah. What's going on there then? Um, so I feel like it's interesting you say that, uh, Christopher Ormy. Yes, what, sir. What have you made of Stoke? Because the the style changed. They're trying to become Swansea. Yeah, it's um, it's been quite nice to see because there was always something about Stoke the way. It, they were able to come into the Premier League and almost establish themselves immediately. Um, and I think that aspect of it is something that, that Swansea took on board. And mm. um, But they did come in for a lot of criticism with, like I say, the way they played and very set-piece heavy. Uh, so it's been a nice sort of evolution really over the last couple of years and signing so many Barcelona players now. Um I think this season those really stood out with some of their signings. For me, Van Inkel is, even though he's only on loan, that could be such a great bit of business. Yeah, I agree with you. And for a football playing side, someone like him could just prove the difference between finishing bottom half, top half, or even a push for Europe, looking at some of the players now that Stoke have. You know, pushing on towards those European places is far from out of the asking so I've been very impressed over the last sort of season and a half yeah no I'd agree with you I think you're right to mention that Swansea and Stoke came up and stayed up in very different fashions but in the same way they did it they did it effectively it wasn't like neither of you have really been fighting relegation in the last few years you've always just sort of been steady mid-table you know what you're going to get and I expect really we'll talk about Swansea soon but I expect the same thing to happen again Um, this whole this whole Stoke Alona, Barcelona thing. <laughs> I can't help... I, I have to mention this, Dave. And the reason yeah. I bring it up is because you've kind of si- signed Barcelona players, but you've kind of signed Barcelona players that didn't fit Barcelona. So, you, yeah. I'm not sure you're going to turn into this this possession-heavy, attacking, flu- fluid force that is Barcelona. I think you're still going to be Stoke with a bit of... with a step over, a little bit. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah I guess you could say that. But, I mean, we've got more... I, I read a stat earlier this week. We've got more Champions League winners than Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal. So, hmm. hopefully, they can bring the quality. I mean, some of them already have. You look at Bojan, he's a magician. I mean, he's he's un, he's unplayable, but when he got that injury, it was... I, I couldn't believe it when it happened, but I think he's going to be brilliant for us this season again. All right, then. Where do you think you'll finish this season? It's optimistic, but I think if if we get playing right and we get the results uh, early on, I think seventh. Seventh. So you think you could do a bit of a, a bit of a Southampton? Yeah. Maybe. Okay, uh, Chris, what do you reckon? Um, I think it's definitely top ten. I think the squad's improved from last year, and keeping Bojan fit is key. Um, I've liked him since I saw him. I think it was at an under 17s tournament hmm. for Spain. And he's always had something about them. I was very surprised he didn't make it at Barcelona. Surprised when the Roma deal didn't work out for him. And, yeah, I think this season, if he can keep fit with some of the other signings they've made, it should definitely be a top 10 performance. Yeah, I think, uh, just briefly, I think we should talk about how well Mark Hughes has done. It's, I think, like previous to Stoke, obviously he left, left Fulham in a, in a strange time. Has gone into Stoke and and on a scale of one to ten, Dave, we'll finish with this. How well has Mark Hughes done at Stoke? Uh, ten being the best. I think I'll give him an eight out of ten. I think I think he's he's done better than most of us thought he was going to do for us. Um, and it it's been un- unbelievable the change he's brought in. So I'll, I'll give him a solid eight out of ten for that. Okay, great. Uh, right then, we'll move on. We haven't got a Sunderland fan. Again, if you are a Sunderland fan and you're interested in coming on, tweet me, leave a comment. And uh, if you're a Sunderland fan that doesn't want to come on but wants to let me know about Sunderland, do so. We're now going to talk, as three fans that don't support Sunderland, about Sunderland. Uh, and I'm a little bit fearful. I'll start off by saying that I don't think they're in as strong a position as they were last season. And last season, I didn't think they were in that strong a position to begin with, really. Uh, they've brought in Quates, uh, Adam Matthews, Jeremy Lenz, uh, Eunice Kabul. Talk of Envia and Fur also coming in. Obviously, we're pre-recording. If it's happened at this point, then that changes things for me. I think those two signings could make a big difference in there. Uh, and they've also sold Connor Wickham and Virginie's gone out as well. Um, last season, though, Christopher, what did you yep. think of Sunderland? I was quite disappointed in them 
I I felt that the strikers didn't seem bothered for a long time. It wasn't as if they were they were looking for goals. Uh, they've got a lot of quality midfielders that I think just didn't perform, and the defense was shaky. But I'm I'm not a big fan of their defense, so I kind of expected that. But the rest of the team just didn't perform, and there seemed a morale problem. I think a lot of their fans, as well as the players at times, seemed to expect them to be going down. Mm. And for some reason, it just took a long time for that team to start getting some results. And like you, I'm very fearful for this season. They shouldn't go down with some of the players they've got, but they do still need more, especially for me up front. I don't think there's there's enough quality up front to actually make a difference in the Premier League. Yeah, obviously Defoe's there now, and he's on the wrong side of 30. He's been around the block a little bit. He's still savvy enough to do all right in the Premier League. But I just think this season, they miss an X-factor. Obviously, we heard Dave a moment ago talk about Afalai coming in at Stoke, and him maybe being the difference between having a really good team and just a solid team. And I think Sunderland are completely lacking. And for Sunderland fans, please disagree with me. This is why I wanted Bonnie to come on, really, to fight me. Um... But I think they're missing an X factor. I think they're missing that one player that will win it when everything else isn't working out. Will will turn up for them. Um, Dave, agree, disagree? Yeah, I, I agree with that. The problem I find with Sunderland is that De Canio came in and he bought a lot of players, and I feel that the team that they, especially last season that they played, is just a load of individuals. They're not a team. They haven't really gelled, and I mm. don't feel that they can stay up with that. I, the problem with Sunderland for me, I, f- I find that they buy a lot of players and then, like I said, they don't gel and then they have to leave it till the end of the season. I, d- I don't think um, they're going to do very well this season. I think it'll be the same case again, um, especially if they buy a lot of players, but I, d- I don't see it working out for Sunderland again. Yeah, I, 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 so I'm worried that it's going to be tough. I think last season... I get uh, Chris touched on it, that I think a lot of the Sunderland fans thought it was going to be over, but Advocat came in and... I guess he did what he's paid to do, right? He came in, he steadied it a little bit. He got a little bit of siege mentality about it. They did okay. They got a few good results. But I don't know. I th- I find Sunderland to be quite a polarising team. I'm finding it difficult to talk about them because it's a bit of an if and a, if and a maybe. If they get in Veer and, and Fur in, as I say, if this happened already, their midfield becomes a lot, lot stronger and it allows players like Adam Johnson, despite the controversy with him, to excel a little bit more and it allows Defoe a little bit more time on the ball because you're going to have some more quality players in there. Um, if there's one thing you think they're missing, Chris, because what, like, okay, what, what I'm going to do first is where do you think they'll finish and then we'll talk about why you think they'll finish there. Uh, I do see them struggling, I think, the highest I could put them would be 16th. Okay. I really think they're going to be in for a bad season right now. Okay, and now, why? Um, For me, it's both ends of the pitch. Defence, they've got a couple of decent defenders, but O'Shea and Brown are ageing. I don't think they've got enough quality there if they got an injury. Well, interestingly, and, can I just to come in? They've, yeah. brought, they've brought in Kabul and Quates, Quates from Liverpool. Do you think that's enough because that, that are they upgrades that, I guess that's the real question I think Kabul is I like him a lot I think he's very powerful strong he fits into the back line quite well Quartes has done okay on loan but I've been disappointed since he first came to Liverpool mm. um, you know he's a big tall ball playing defender and there were a lot of expectations on him and he hasn't really for me, stepped into that role and sort of established himself. So, this is a make or break year for him, but he's got those injury worries as well. So, I'm not sure. I, th- I think they've improved the back line. I don't think they've improved it enough. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And they really need somebody up front as well because Fletcher and Danny Graham work hard but just don't seem to have goals in them at the moment. And, like you say, Defoe's the wrong side of 30. And yet he's still far and away the best chance at a goal they've got. Yeah. Well, I rate Danny Graham. I mean, if you've seen Palma Drama, you'll know why. Uh, Dave, where do you think they'll finish? Is it relegation for you? Uh, yeah, I think the highest is a scrape 17th for them. So you, th- you, th- you think just bare survival will be a good season? Yeah. Pretty okay. much. That's fair. I guess I, do, I, I would say, do you want to add to anything? But I feel like we may well have covered 
uh, your thoughts on Sunderland? Yeah, that's pretty. That it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. Well then, Chris, it's time to come on to your boys, Swansea City. Uh, you're a season ticket holder, so you know more about them than most. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. I'd hope so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're awake, I mean, they do pass it around a lot. Uh, yes. And you, you've had a very, like a relatively successful window again. You've done your business quickly and quietly. Uh, do you think it's all done the business side of it? Yeah, I, th- I think we're all done. Um, we do like to get the business out of the way as early as possible. There have been a couple of times where we haven't managed that in the past and the play has taken a few months more than usual to try and get into things hmm. uh, and get established. So I think it's important to do your business early in the window. And I was very happy as well with who we picked up and the positions we picked up. I think this has been a real season of not just improving first team quality but actually having depth for the first time possibly in the club's history Yeah, we've well, actually got a second team that we could put out which is almost as good as the first now. Yeah, so well, speaking of last season an 8th place finish, right? Yeah? Yep. That has got to be pretty, <laughs> like I, I'm being a bit facetious here because of course it can get better, but can it get much better than last season? Um, I think it can we're still not competing with the very best which is something we need to learn to do Chelsea have had our number uh, Man City have had our number we've kind of got results against nearly everybody else in the league Mm. but there's still improvements to be made I think some of the players we've signed are a good step in that direction but I'm not sure how easy it will be to repeat sort of last season's success because you know, the second highest ever finish we've had, the highest Premier League finish, highest points total. Just you know, when you set records like that, they're very, very difficult to repeat the next season. Yeah, we spoke a little bit before we recorded. We started talking about Gary Monk, and I want to know how 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 good is he? How good is he for Swansea? I think that's the best question because there's a little bit of talk that if a big cl- if a big club comes in, not to say you aren't a big club, Chris, but if uh, if if a European team, a, a team sort of challenging in Europe came for his services that he might be tempted but you said you're not concerned you think he you think he's there for the long term i think he is i mean he's been at our club now for over 10 seasons uh he's been with us through the relegation issues when we nearly went out of the league and out of existence completely he came in and you know was part of the the squad that kept us up um he's been studying under every manager at our club ever since I think you know he's been captain for a decade as well so I think he's got a lot of ties to the club a lot of ties to the area um, he's got a young family now which I don't think he'd want to move even if he did fancy moving on Yeah. but I I think in the future a big club should come in for him yeah. whether or not they do is another matter but I think it, at this stage it would take a big club as well a Liverpool. So you saying uh, if a Liverpool came in, yeah, Liverpool right. might do it. And, and anyone sort of top five in the Premier League. Oh come on, that's a dig. A that was a dig. <laughs> that was that was a massive dig. I'll take it though. I'll take it uh, on the chin. Um, but, uh, you you, yeah. men- you mentioned that he's been there under a few different managers. Out of obviously we spoke we, again. We spoke about it just before we started. But Loudrop and Rogers have been there. Different styles, different kind of managers. Uh, which one is he more like, and is it a good thing? I see him a lot more like Brendan Rodgers in terms of how he sort of builds squad togetherness and focuses on morale. Hmm. Um, Laudrup was a big name, very talented footballer in his day. I think he improved a couple of aspects in the squad, which luckily every manager we've had since our dark days has improved the squad and our style of football. Everybody's had their part to play, but I think one of the the two managers that Monk has learned the most from is Rogers, and just the way he handled the entire squad and yeah. motivated people and got us promoted in the first place to the Premier League. Yeah, well, it's, it's been it's been nice to watch. I think you've got a lot of admirers for the way you play, and not only that, you've you've brought in a player. I'm going to focus on one particular name you've brought in. Andre Au is a fantastic free transfer. You've got to be excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to be too excited because <laughs> go on, have a smile. You know, I'm, I'm smiling. I'm smiling. <laughs> I mean, 
I saw him last, uh, you know, I saw him on Saturday for the last preseason game. That's the first chance I've had to see him up live and personal. Um, I've watched the other preseason games on YouTube because the Swans have their own channel up there, and they're very good at showing like the training and interviews and whatnot. Yeah. So that's always a good way to get to know them. But the first chance I saw to get him, you know, to see him live, get his first start, it was a bit. Um, it was interesting because he's not a tall player but he loves to compete in the air which is something we've missed and he's a lot more physical than I would have thought because I think of him as more like a fair play, you know, flair player relying on his pace going forward but within four seconds of the game kicking off he, he'd like bundle someone off the pitch and they were rolling around in <laughs> agony so the concern I had of him maybe not being able to be physically in the Premier League is kind of gone almost immediately. So, yeah. For the, for um, the, uh, now, you've see, good. now you've seen him, is there anyone you compare him to in the league already that he, that he is familiar to? Um, or is he a different animal? He's certainly different to anyone we've had. Um, I'm trying to think around the league. There isn't too many I could say. I guess my, my question really is, how does he differ from players like Nathan Dyer and Wayne Routledge that you've had in previous seasons? What's What does he bring that's different? I think a lot of our players, especially out wide over the years, have been very one-dimensional. Nathan Dyer is pace. Yeah. Uh, there's very few that are, that'll be faster with him, with the ball at his feet. Um, you know, Routledge is skill. He doesn't move very fast. He doesn't score goals, but you know, he'll beat anybody one on one um if he wants to. Yeah. Ayu is a bit more of a multi threat. You don't know which foot he's gonna gonna go on. You don't know sort of if he's gonna go for goal or try and find an assist and like I say, even though he's short, he does love the challenge in the air and he wins more than his fair share, so I think there's a bit more sort of all round quality hmm. that you see in him than you would see in most of our other wingers. So I'm really hoping that he has a good season, gets gets his feet in quite early on and is able to prove a difference. Yeah, because over on the chance of window, you've not sold any big names. You've bought in AU. Uh, Ed, is, Ed is a relatively big name as well. I guess he'll be challenging Gamis, right? I hope so. Uh, I like what I see. He's big, he's tall, he's strong, but he also has very good technique, apart from a first touch. Which is, but in fairness, that's kind of, that's been the mould you've gone for for quite a few seasons now. Ever since Danny Graham started that trend, I'd like to think. Yeah. Is that kind? <laughs> but that seems, to be the strike, that seems to be the striker you're going for. You've had Boney, you've got Gamis, now you're going for Edo. They're all quite a similar mould. Yeah. We, over the years, again, we've lacked height, we've lacked strength, so up front, we've really sort of you know, focused on that and you know, Michu, Boney, Danny Graham, you know, they were all really good players for us. All world class players, yeah, I'd agree with that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Gomis did well last season after he sort of stopped being upset that he wasn't number one striker. <laughs> you know, as, as soon as he got that those few starts under his belt, I think he started to buy in a bit more to the way the club played and really hit the ground running second half of the season yeah so I'm I'm hoping for more of the same from Eddie it, it, he's a big tall player but he's also got a bit of pace about them which I think in a team like ours you do need yeah uh, my, my final real question is that with the, t with the new TV deal and the fact Swansea have been in the league for quite a little while now are you surprised you've not spent more money Yes and no. I think we've done really well over the last few seasons on free transfers because, you know, Ayu's come in, Fabianski came in, who had a great season last year. Gomis came in on a free transfer. We did small money deals then for Jack Cork and Kyle Norton, who, you know, in the mid 20s, both English and both have really, really impressed me. Mm. Um, I think we've done well on that front not having to spend big money but a lot of our spending's been off the pitch we've got a, a brand new academy which is category 1 status now Yeah. Um, we've been spending a lot on youth coaching and the under 21's won their league last season now they're in 
the uh, highest quality league, which should be interesting to see how we test against the best academies. Yeah. The stadium's been expanded, brand new training facilities. Um, so I- I'd say we've probably spent a good thirty million, and planning to spend another twenty million on our facilities and improving the stadium, which. It, th- I'd say that's probably more important than the first team right now because this is our best squad and the only way it could have been better would probably have been keeping hold of Boney last January Mm -hmm. which was never going to happen but apart from him I think this squad is far superior to the one we had last season so we haven't needed to spend a lot of money on playing staff yeah, I guess when you finished eighth, you feel pretty comfortable that you'll be able to, if not sustain it, not drop far enough down for it to be a problem. And I think that's kind of the situation Swansea are in right now. Uh, Dave, what have you made of Swansea then? I mean, they just do the bit. They just do the business, don't they? Week like week in week out, they always put in a good shift, and they always seem to do all right. Yeah, I, th- I think Swansea is like we said before. I think Stoke like to mould themselves on the Swansea model. Um, from the past <laughs> couple a, of seasons, that is such a strange thing for anyone to say. But carry on. But I think I think that's the way we're trying to play now, um, and I admire them a lot. I admire players like Gilfie Sigurdsson. I like him a lot. Um, hey. I, I don't know how he does it. He just seems to pop up with goals from anywhere as Sigurdsson. But hmm. that's a player I would like to have at Stoke a lot. But I think I think Swansea will do well again. I really like, it. like I said, I, I really like the way they play. Um, they're really, really nice on the eye to watch, and I think I think they'll have another great season. Where do you think they'll finish? Eighth T- again, I think. Eighth again. That, you take that, Christopher. You take that, wouldn't you? I would. I would. Um, and I'd just like to touch on the fact Dave says that you know Stoke modelling themselves a little bit on Swansea and playing a bit more football. I think over the last year or so under Monk, we've started to adopt a bit more. Of Stokes football as well because we, we <laughs> what a over- loving what a loving this is yeah but we overplayed the ball so many times since we were in the Premier League there's been no end product and now we're not afraid to go long and especially with the big strikers and the quick wingers we're able to sort of put the ball forward and it won't be a, a hopeful lump but it will be a direct ball forward yeah. sort of over third of the pitch and. I think it's important to sort of keep evolving. I think that's what we're doing, sort of moving towards Stoke, a Stoke and moving towards us. So it's yeah. kind of interesting how those philosophies now seem to be balancing out as well. It's interesting you say that because I think Southampton and arguably Sunderland try and do a different, try and do a similar thing. I think Southampton probably do it as successfully as anybody else in the way that they are another team that are heavy on possession, but they're prepared to give it up to Pelo if they need to. They're prepared to get it out wide and go fast. And I think that's that's becoming the style of the Premier League, not just the teams that we're talking about today. I think a lot of teams are trying to adopt that. It's like it's sort of less Arsenal. It's not quite Chelsea. It's a little bit Manchester United from when Fergie was in charge to the point that they yeah. get the ball and have three different options every single time and pick one of them and just go for it. And, and it's a bit more gung ho. It's a little bit more reckless, but at the same time, it's extraordinarily effective, as we're seeing from from teams like, South, like Southampton, who aren't stacked full of these world class players um, but can still provide results week in week out and Swansea and, and Stoke are both really good examples of that as well uh, I'd say that Sunderland and Southampton were even more so but you didn't get any fans on so I'm not bothered <laughs> not bothered about complimenting you um, so where do you think you'll finish next year then Chris Dave's been pretty kind he's given you another 8th place fin- eighth, eighth placed finish uh, yeah. what, you're, yeah. what are you thinking because obviously you've not you've not spent big but you seem pretty content I'm very content my only worry would be how much the teams below us have strengthened. Hmm, that's what I, yeah, that's um, what I mean, really. There's been a lot of money spent. Like, say, the new TV deals come in. Everybody's got a lot of cash. And I don't know if we can we can finish 8th again. I'll take 10th. You know, hmm. I'd take 12th. As long as we're not fighting relegation, I'm perfectly happy. I've seen the club in a lot worse position than it is now. <laughs> so... I'm optimistic, but I think there's a lot more sort of contenders for those mid-table spots than there were last year, especially if Newcastle and Everton and teams like that start sort of performing to where they should, really. Yeah. You, I think they've had a couple of bad years between them. You wonder if Everton play like they did the year before last, that it will shift everyone down a spot, because Everton have got the players, certainly they're capable of being there. 
So yeah, you're right to mention Everton and Newcastle. Who, who, who bloody knows, Christopher? Who bloody knows what they're going to do? We'll see. Anyway, gents, I think that pretty much uh, brings us to an end. But it's been a pleasure having you both on. Uh, Dave and Chris, their links will be in the description down below. Uh, so go and check them out if you need to. Chris with a a, a bevy of uh, of uh, Swansea knowledge and Dave up and coming YouTuber. Check him out. So, uh, boys, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming on. Cheers. Anytime. Good. And we'll see you again. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And from me, Dr. Benji, until next time, goodbye.